Keith and Judah, and I'm here, back with Wolves reporter, Mr. Joe Edwards. Joe, uh, back on camera, and we, we have some news, we have some big news, some yeah. massive news. The worst kept secret in football, <laughs> uh, Bruno Larger is the new Wolves manager. Uh, look, obviously everybody knows it's been coming, it's been coming for some time. Now it's been confirmed, everybody knows where they are. Everybody knows where they are, we've known the case for a good week now. Obviously he was granted his work permit last Wednesday by the FA and since then it's been a pretty smooth process. Um, obviously coming in um, as manager, arrived in the country, all kind of having his photos done, speaking and doing his, his club interview. Mm -hmm. um, his backroom staff on in yet, um, that'll be probably next week that is, is the expected time. They've still got to go through the process of uh, having work permits completed. The, I don't think the club foresees any problems with that. Yeah. But um, yeah, Bruno Lager's in, it's official. Larger, larger. Larger, larger. That, that is, we, larger. that's one thing we've got to sort out. Is larger. Larger, if it's lager, if it's larger. Larger, it's not lager, mate. It's not lager. Uh, we, all sure like, we all like lager. Well, but, some um, of us prefer a few bubbles, mate, but um, that's fine. Yeah, but Bruno, He's here and he's yeah. Wolves' his new manager. He is, look, um, he's, um, he's obviously got a decent pedigree. He likes to play attacking football. Yes. Uh, he's won the Portuguese Championship. He comes, at, I guess, not a lot of people have known his name no. uh, before he got linked. However, you could su suggest that not a lot of people knew Nuno's name. And, and he obviously did great things here. It was a shock to a lot of people that Nuno's left. But look, Nuno and Espirito Santo is no longer manager of Wolves. Bruno Larger is. People have got to get behind him, I'm sure 99.9% .9 will, give him the time, because it will take time to turn this around, to, to, to play the kind of football that he wants to play, and to see a product that's a successful product on the pitch. This isn't going to happen overnight. This is a big task here. It is, and the, the appointment is, is just the start. Mm. I, mean, I, I said it as much in a comment piece last week, but... You know, the, the summer was massive anyway. We've mm. been saying that for months, but it's even bigger now. Yeah. Um, you've got Luke Bruno Lager coming in, the, or Larger, sorry. Mm. The, he, he played a 4-4-2 at Benfica, uh, attack-minded football. I mean, his Benfica team, when they won that championship, scored 103 goals yeah. that season. Wolves, conversely, last season, scored 36. I'll settle for 99 next season. <laughs> All right? Let's not get greedy. They scored 36 in 38 games, so that, there's a big differential mm. there. And in, in terms of if he, if he wants to bring that same attacking style, especially playing a 4-4-2, then you know, these Wolves players that are here currently have barely ever played in a 4-4-2 apart from, you know, I guess, late on in a couple of games. So, the, you know, the manager is in. That's the first step, really. Mm. You know, they've got to they've got to recruit, and uh, of course there are players linked with moves away, and you know part and parcel of football, I guess, players will move on, but they've got to make sure they get the recruitment right because... If Lager comes in and you're giving him the same tools to work with, then you know you got you got to make sure you give him mm. the tools to be successful. Because make no mistake, this squad still needs a refresh. What, what are the aim and what are the goals then for this season? Is this is this a very much a transitional season for him? Has Jeff Shee brought him in because you know for the, with the philosophy that okay, get used to the club now, get the players in that you need to to really push next season or is it very much a short-term plan let's completely change this way let's go attacking and let's still push towards the european places i mean th there's a lot isn't there there's a, there's a lot to do in a short space of time it is it, it's hard to it's hard to really say until i guess you see them play and we've we've with larger i mean 4-4-2 at benfica but there's no guarantee that he's going to mm. do that here i mean nuno of course was so religious with a three at the back for mm. most of his tenure at wolves and had not played that formation previously all that much so it'd be interesting to see what he actually wants to do whether he sticks to what has served him well in the past or works in a vision that wolves want him to work in um in terms of what they can do i mean I mean, I think it's asking a lot for them to... It's a very feel... wide spectrum, I think, for me, of what yeah. Wolves can do next season. Yeah. Really. And it will depend on, on, on a lot of other things, uh, squad size, getting yeah. the right players in, whether they're successful straight away, but, but also a little bit of luck. And, and all, all good managers need a bit of luck. And, you know, the fixtures come out uh, next Wednesday, I think, Premier yeah. League fixtures. I'm sure that he'll be hoping for a kind run or, you know, whatever is the kind run these yeah. days. Um, to start off because uh, because they'll want to hit the ground running but they'll want to get some goals and get some wins on the board quickly. I'm oh, sure for the fan base as well. Of course, of course. I mean, it, for, for me, 
I mean, I could be pessimistic at the best of times, but I'm thinking if you're looking at this, re, you know, this refresh that he's got to do, and I mean, to you know, to be pushing for Europe for for top six or whatever, I think, you know, for his first season that might be a bit, you know, a bit big of an ask. I mean, if they if they can get around that top half and then mount a push, then brilliant. But I think yeah, he's got to get off to a nice start. I mean, at least with him coming in there, of course, you've you still got the Euros to contend with. But he's got a good amount of time. You know, he can come in for the start of pre-season, which is the start of next month, I think, mm. somewhere around the 5th of July. So he'll be there for the start of that. He's got time to get his philosophy mm. across, hopefully get some players in before, you know, that first ball is kicked next season. And, and as you say, get off to a good start because, you know, of course, people, you know, are still, you know, reeling a bit from what happened with Nuno. And, you know, after that change, I think there is an onus on Bruno to start well. Of course, you've got to get behind him, but... It's so important for any new manager coming in and Bruno included to to have a, at least a, a decent start, an encouraging start, and you start to see signs of you know where where he wants to take walls. And, and like you say, fans will want to see attacking, free flowing football. Yeah. A lot of fans have not been in the stadium for well over 15, 16 months. I know there was a handful in that last game of the season, but they're coming back and they're coming back and they want to be entertained, don't they? They, they do, and, and if and if Bruno can replic, replicate what he did in that title winning season of Benfica, then f- fans will happily take mm. that. Um, you know, they had a, a again a go back to the system, but they played a four four two with kind of a flouting striker. His biggest kind of breakout star at Benfica being Joao Felix, who then of course moved on to Atletico Madrid for 113 million, mm-hmm. something stupid. But attacking full backs, kind of a, a midfield sitter, a fluid four four two. And the onus was on scoring goals and, and creating goals. I mean, I think that both of the fullbacks were there, you know, among the top assist providers in the league. Um, and you know, as I say, that I think in 19 games he had that season, they scored 71 goals. So that is a lot of goals. I think they average about three above three goals a game under him at Benfica. So. Whether that can translate to English football, we'll have to see. But um, he's, he's been over here, of course, before with Swansea as an assistant and at Sheffield Wednesday. So he's got a bit of an understanding of English football. Mm. And um, if he can bring some of those goals that he had at Benfica, then yeah, we could be on, onto something really nice. Yeah, and he's got to be given time, doesn't he, to get that right? He has. And, you know, it's not going to happen out of nice, as we say. He, he, you know, this is a side that we saw them try and undergo a a change mm. last season from a three to a four. I don't think they really had the players to successfully mm. do it. I think we saw flashes of him in the four, but you know, I think they need I think they need a centre half, if not two. I think they need a centre midfielder if not two. I think they need a striker, a left yeah. back, possibly a goalkeeper. So There's a lot there's a lot, isn't there? there and that's without lot. even thinking about the potential outgoings as well. Exactly. And I'm so, sure some Bruno will want to speak to, to some of these players who have been linked with a move away as well. I mean, they, that's just natural. I'm yeah. sure that I'm sure that um, he'll he'll have his philosophy. I'm sure he'll be looking at the squad. He will have known about this for a long time. He'll be analysing who he wants, what style he wants to play. You know, the the, the problem with Nuno sometimes, I guess, that was frustrating to fans is that um, he didn't change too much. You know, he very much kept the same his correct formation maybe you know sometimes didn't make the changes that people wanted him to make early enough so there will be have to be adaptability there but he will want the right players and he'll want the best players in those positions as well if you take let's say Ruben Neves who's been who's been linked with a move away and then you've got Jean Moutinho who probably is going to play probably a bit part this year you've got Leander Dendonka you know who who, who struggled last season you know that, that's basically your centre midfield gone you know <laughs> obliterated there and that's before you even move on so there's a lot there's a lot of things that he's got to get right and he's got there's going to be some very important decisions that he's got to make early on yeah uh, I mean he's coming in he's, he's, he's obviously taking charge I understand that he's going back to Portugal later this week mm-hmm. um, of course I'd imagine he'll have his phone at the ready and uh, getting you know obviously getting bugged by you saying yeah, come on Bruno any chance <laughs> any chance of a steer yeah so I think obviously the Euros kind of limits what they can do and you know if players have good tournaments then obviously the, their price is skyrocket but yeah. he'll be getting plans in place as to what he wants to do and then and as I say, at least with him coming in now ahead of pre-season, almost a month before pre-season starts, then you'd imagine they've got a good time now to plan and what mm-hmm. they want to do. Of course, maybe the plan can't be stuck to. You never know what happens in football, but um, at least they've got the time now to put the foundations in place and hopefully get off to a successful start. Bruno Large will be sat in this seat, in this seat, taking questions from the media pretty soon as well, not, not just these two ugly mugs. Uh, he is the new manager of Wolverhampton Wanderers for all the... All the reaction to the new manager, make sure you log on to expressandstar.com.